Hi guys and welcome to tonight's live. I'm so excited for tonight's live. And it's all about most of you struggle to find cleaning staff, but not after tonight's live. We've got quite a lot to cover tonight, but I will try to keep this as short as possible. So we're going to go through the best way to advertise to get cleaners. And the first thing is distribute flyers, spread the word via social media, create a referral friend or refer cleaner program in your business, use obviously marketing and then set yourself apart from competition. So the other topics we'll cover is why Facebook uh, boosts won't really work for your business and won't get you the results you want, where to advertise to maximize your efforts and how to offer incentives to get people to refer cleaners into your business and why you need to promote for staff on a ongoing basis all the time. So the first thing, the first five things is obviously distribute flyers. Now it's seen as distributing flyers as, oh, I only do that if I want customers, right? But what you could do is create flyers specifically for looking for staff and that way deliver your flyers to for literally to get staff to attract people to make them aware that you're constantly looking for staff members i always talk about this spreading your seeds there are so many people out there that are actually looking for work but just posting on your facebook page is not really going to give you the sort of the momentum of getting to all of those 2000 people you need to get to all of them and remember on a facebook page if you have a post on there so Basically, only two to three percent people on your page is going to see that. And are the people on your actual page looking for work constantly? So you have to ask yourself, how many people on your page will be looking for work? And then when you do the Facebook boosts, all Facebook is doing is they are literally throwing your advert out there and showing it to anybody. And anybody, sorry, Facebook might not like me for saying this, but it's actually the boosts aren't that great. You're thinking, oh, oh, hang on a minute. If I just boost it, more people will see it. But unless you use specific Facebook targeting, which you will target the area, the person, their interest, you will target so much more. Unless you specify an advert who you're looking for, Facebook will literally just show it to anybody. That's kind of like, yeah, anywhere. So it's not necessarily the case that you're actually boosting your post thinking, I'm going to get staff members. That doesn't work. Like It doesn't work like that. You're literally just getting momentum and you think, okay, so my boosted posts have just had 2,000 people or reached 2,000 people. Why am I not getting cleaners? Because Facebook is not showing it to the right people, so to say, and it, you're not getting hold of that 2,000 people that you need to get hold of. You have to look in in around your area. If there's other cleaning businesses that have staff and some of them have more staff, and I'm not talking about these massive companies that start up and they charge 10 pounds an hour, which means they pay their staff minimum wage. I'm not talking about those because they will pay the lowest possible. Them excluded, have a look in your area how many cleaners other cleaning companies have. And then like there is, you, you've got that play with if you need staff, there are people out there willing to clean, but that company obviously advertised a, a, a lot more people. They reached the right people and they obviously did their homework in writing the ads a certain way to attract those cleaners. So you have to set yourself apart from the competition. You have to write your adverts in a certain way that makes that emotional connection. What will you apply for if you see an ad like most ads are so basic cleaner wanted must be enthusiastic must drive must this there's so much you get paid and bam what are you going to offer as a company to attract those employees for them to go i have got to apply to this advert what will make you apply to that advert and then you've got to reverse play it it has to renate with them emotionally like they really gonna have to want to work for you even if they might not like cleaning that much your advert needs to touch them and say well, hang on a minute i i really just need to apply because i'm missing out if i don't because the cleaners that that are really good already 
they are going to be in a different mindset than just normal cleaners. And you always got to remember, every single person that's ever started a cleaning business have always started from scratch with no cleaners. Then they have to get cleaners. And everybody go, go through the same stage where, yes, it's hard. And I struggled with this a lot. And the amount of times I had too many customers and I was so afraid of losing customers because I didn't have enough staff. But I did learn from a few mistakes, um, which is one, not constantly advertising. I used to wait for customers to get in. Then I used to advertise like mad, be desperate because I really was desperate. Then hired the wrong people because I was desperate until I learned to do this on an automated system. Because the, if you have staff constantly coming in or, or applications coming in, then you can sift through them and get to a stage where you, say for instance, 10 people apply. Maybe one of them might be a good fit for your business. Maybe not. The point is, is to try. It's not going to work. And then try again. And then it might not work. And then try again. Try different things. Try different words. Try different adverts. So we're quickly going to cover where the best places are to advertise. So when you are small, the best places are obviously free places. So you don't spend a lot of money on actually advertising for staff. I actually made the mistake of being that desperate. I went to a lot of agencies and I'm talking about thousands of pounds I spent because they were going to write my advert for me and bring all the staff members in. And I was so excited because I'm like, this is the end of my staffing problem. However, yes, um, absolutely. I actually got no staff from that until I got a lot bigger. Because if you then go for supervisors and managers, then it's different. But your normal cleaners don't hang out on Indeed. I probably shouldn't name these places, but they don't go to Indeed and say, I want a cleaning job. <laughs> they just don't. It's not worth the money they're actually asking for what you're looking for. You can advertise people like Gumtree, your first five adverts are free. And there is a lot of cleaners on there the adverts for cleaners. There's also people that advertise because they're loan workers, they're solo cleaners. And you can go into Gumtree, have a look at all of them. Obviously in a specific area, you can, you know, write them a message and just say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. This might be, you know, suit you for these reasons. Remember, always stand out from the competition. If you have a look at all the normal ads on there and you make that emotional connection with that person that's looking for cleaning work, that's where you're going to stand out. And that's where you're going to attract more and more people to your business. But also, like I say, have this on a consistent basis. Go and post flyers out saying we need people to come and work for us. And this is the specifications. This is the job title. This will be what will be expected for, of you. But then, like I say, give them something that they literally can't refuse. Like it's, it's a no brainer for them. What will you, what, what will make you now go and work for another company? Because you're finding maybe this so hard. I'm not saying do it. Don't ever give up. I'm just saying from an advert point of view, what will make you go and work for another company? What is it that you can offer as a cleaning business that will make that person go, oh, hang on a minute. So it's about spreading your seeds with the right emotional message and then in different in different places all the time and have this ongoing, literally have an advert out all the time in this area for this amount. You're better off financially getting somebody not having the work, but paying them for it. Then you are waiting till you got a load of customers and then you might lose the customers because of the fact that you don't have the staff to cover. And if you can, you might be able to do the work yourself until you can find cover. But to find somebody means putting an advert out, then have, waiting for applications to come in, then the telephone interview, then you need to sort of trial period them, then the final interview. That takes time. You don't have that two or three weeks and to wait for and to sell a customer. Oh, by the way, I, I know a lot of clean homes got waiting lists, so did we. But you can't say, oh, sorry, but we can't start for two months because we haven't got the staff members. People want cleaning now and they want their house clean tomorrow. That's it. Like they don't want to wait. And that's why you might find you might lose customers due to that fact. 
So if you constantly are doing your flyers and constantly have adverts out, then you can actually, they will be coming in all the time. You can also have an, an actual application on your website that can download for them to fill in all the time. So you literally have applications coming in all the time and you sift through them. And if somebody is really awesome and good, you break your neck to get them to work for you. So you're also seen by your customers as a really awesome company because you're constantly advertising, which means you're growing. That's why it's so important to literally have this process happen all the time and you're sieving through it as you're going through it. Even if you don't need cleaners, that's fine. But that one person that's going to be a really great fit might just apply when you don't need them and then you're going to lose them. So make sure that you put your adverts out. You can use selling pages and mum's pages. You can just putting them out there. I mean, you might get replies, you might not. But the best way to actually work with these Facebook selling groups is going through like a referral system. Find me a clean referral system. So you probably on your page have got a lot of friends of your own friends. And what you can say to them, send them as a message. If they're a really good friend, they will. If they're not, don't be friends with them because <laughs> they're not worth being friends with. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Say to them, look, how about if I post, say for instance, I want a cleaner or anything else, can you share it? Can you tell people I am looking for cleaners? And if you know of anybody else, give them a code, right? So I know a lot of people will cringe. And then you say to them, okay, if I find a cleaner or you find me a cleaner, what I'll do is I'll give you 40 pounds. All they have to do is sit on Facebook and share and like write a few things. Every person or every friend you have knows 100 people that you don't know, especially in a specific area. There's no point if you're like in Surrey to asking your friend in Birmingham, because obviously that can't work. So it have to be in your in sort of in your area. Might even a little bit out of your area will be OK as well. Now, I know a lot of people saying, oh, what do you mean for it? I can't afford 40 pounds to like give somebody that brings a staff member in all the time. But let's look at it. It's sort of in a perspective of one cleaner working for you. Say, for instance, you charge 15 and obviously this is not taking any expenses out of it. But just to look at it in a different light. If, say, for instance, like I say, it's, they work eight hours a day. You charge 15, you pay them 10. So you make five pounds per hour for that cleaner. So that's 40 pounds a day if it's eight hours. And then it will be 200 pounds a week that they'll be bringing in. And that is 10,400 pounds. One cleaner will bring into your business. So if you ask yourself the question, okay, so is it worth giving somebody 40 pounds to bring in a really good cleaner into my business? Yes, it definitely is. What you can also do is ask your current staff. If you have current staff members, guys, we're looking for somebody to join our team. If you bring somebody in, I'll give you 50 pound bonus or a 40 pound bonus. But remember the end result, how much that new cleaner is going to bring into your business. Always remember that. Uh, the same goes for the customers. Is it worth spending money to get customers? Of course it is. If you look at the lifetime value of each customer and what they bring in, it's definitely worth it. But you can literally just set it up and ask your friends all the time. Not just, oh, I need a cleaner now. And oh, let me just quickly, because if you hire when you're desperate, you make the wrong decision because you overlook certain things. Like if you employ people because they're really good people and they've got a really good vibe about them and really good energy, but they turn up with really dirty hair to the interview, say for instance, you will actually overlook that and think, oh, but I just need them. So you will make the wrong decision when you hire desperate. Always hire slowly, fire fast. And don't feel bad if you have to fire somebody. But remember, they have to understand everything and the whole concept of how your business work and train them to be a good employee first. But it's literally a case of you've tried you fight. It's not about trying and failing. It's about trying. Then you'll find out what you've done wrong. Then try it something different. Then find out, okay, so that didn't work that well. But don't let it give you up hope. Don't sit there and think, oh, that's it. I'm giving up. I can't find any staff. There's no more good employees out there. Because you, you know that you can and you will believe that you can and you will find them. And they will. You will get them. 
Just keep trying and never give up. Try different methods, try different places. I wouldn't, when you're small, sort of pay really to advertise anywhere else, unless you have done a thorough like Facebook advert sort of course, so you understand the basics of, you know about it because if you if you don't and you try Facebook adverts and then it doesn't work and you're like well I've tried it and it doesn't work but there's a lot more that goes in and in the academy I do a very <laughs> deep dive into Facebook advertising and how to get stuff that way however it's complicated it doesn't take five seconds to learn but it is very interesting. But the, the principle um, applied is you take one picture and one set of words and you test it and see what replies you get. Have five different set of words. Or remember the emotional connection on what makes your business so different. So they have to apply. They have to feel if I don't apply now, I'm like I'm missing out. That's the kind of people also that you want to attract into your business that will help really help you get your business to the next stage. And then what? once again, once you have one staff member, you then tell her, like, do you know anybody, you know, that's going to work with you that can help us bring them in. I will give you, you don't have to start with a £50 incentive. That's what we offered. But it can be small to start off with or ask them. If I ask you to do this, or hang on a minute, why don't you deliver the leaflets? And if any of those people apply or I get a cleaner for you delivering the leaflets, I'll give you £50 or I'll give you this money. Get your, your existing staff excited about getting to the point where they're bringing in new work. They're feeling part of your community. You're building morale because they feel a part of what you're building. So you can get them involved, get your friends involved and offer that referral system. But literally, like I say, remind your friends all the time. Hey, have you gotten anybody yet? Because I haven't heard anything from you. Give your friends each a code that the person that applies have to quote. And then you know where it came from and who to give the money to. And if a staff brings in a new staff member, shout about it, make sure your whole team knows about it and make a big deal, sort of really like, well, Sarah just got 50 pounds because she brought in a new staff member. And remember terms and conditions, obviously that person needs to stay for a minimum of three months and actually work out because if they just come in and stay for two days, then obviously <laughs> it's not worth the 50 pounds. And that's how to offer incentives for your friends to spread the word for you. And you're basically creating like a sales, like a sales team that your friends can help you with. Because if they go to work all day and they sit there at night, what they're doing on Facebook, or they're on Instagram, and they can help you get staff easier in your area. Also, the other place is local shops to put adverts out local shops. Now, most local shops these days don't do it for free anymore. So you absolutely have to pay, but it's, it's so little, but it's worth it because of people walking past and actually seeing, they always look in there because there's either stuff for sale or there's jobs being offered. And even if there's another cleaning sort of company offering, remember, <laughs> offer not necessarily more money, more money that do attract people, but the emotional connection and like give them an offer they can't refuse. They're like, they just have to ring you. And that's how you also expand your area. So if you go into a different area and there are actually shops in different areas or your offices or whatever you're doing in different areas, go to that area and post. And you can do it now. Go to every single shop or news agent that you can find and go and post an advert. And you can pay to have that advert up for three months, six months, a year. The longer you do it, sometimes they give you a discount. And, but that way you always have that advert sitting there. And sometimes that's how you can find customers as well, because customers will advertise in the shop's windows. So it's literally having that constant stream from all angles, then coming into your business. And then as they come in, you sift through them and then you know, okay, so, Everything that happens, oh, where did you hear from us? Or where did you know that we're looking for cleaners? And you, then you mark it, you have a spreadsheet. So that's what I've done for that advertising. That's how many leaflets, that's where they were actually sort of posted. And then you can ask them where it came from. So you can track where the cleaners came from. And then you will know after a while, okay, hang on a minute, the shops ones are working really well. 
or the gum tree adverts are working really well. And then you know, once again, it's about trying, and then you will sort of figure out, oh, hang on a minute, like the shops are really bringing a lot of people in, so I'm gonna like maximize that and try different words every month to see what difference it makes. And then after, say for instance, you do one every five months, different ones, you'll know exactly which one attracts the people. And, and then once you know that, obviously you'll know what words to use to really hone them in. Right guys, so to get started, just remember to advertise this, to let's spread your seeds everywhere. Let all everybody know to like that you're looking for cleaners, but do it on a consistent basis so you can sift through. And once again, your adverts, you just need to really hone in on your adverts, what you say, make that emotional connection and really stand out. Right, so I'm just gonna have a look at the comments. Carrie has asked, what if we do that and then we, we can't fill them with the hours? Oh, right, so if you get somebody, like I said, you pay for them, even if you don't have the work, get them to clean your house, whatever you, <laughs> you need to fill those hours. Yes, you're gonna be losing money, but you won't in the long term really because they are worth so much more. And you will obviously be advertising for, for customers all the time on a consistent basis as well. So doing both consistent, you shouldn't have that problem. You do in the beginning until you start doing it consistently. And then the I think the panic uh, about the staff thing, it stopped you from hiring desperate. But just advertise like hell when you um, when you get that member. But you should do that on a consistent basis in any case. So if you're consistently looking for customers and, and having your market system in a place where customers are consistently coming in, you shouldn't technically have that problem. But like I say, shut your eyes and pay that wage, wages until you get the customers in. And you can also um, have your customers on a referral basis. So your customers refer other customers and on a monthly basis. And remember every new customer you get, every new staff member you get, they know a hundred other people or 200 other people. So it's about reminding them what they can do for you, but you just have to remind them all the time. So I wouldn't stress too much about that. You might think that will be a problem, but once you have your systems up and running and getting customers in on a flow, then that that technically should not be shouldn't be a big issue, right? Jackie live is not responding. Oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> I didn't know it's not responding. Gumtree, yes, um, Carrie Gumtree is um, actually a place where I got when I first started. I got a lot of my first actually self-employed people, and um, because I contacted people on there that was advertising, and because it, it was more sort of the office cleaning out of hours cleaning but I found it very hard the domestic side of things which is why I switched to office and because of the people not willing to work during the day or they couldn't work summer holidays or they only had to work 16 hours a day and I had so many hours come in so I made the switch to office cleaning and yeah Gumtree worked really well for me like I say your first five adverts are free so you know why not like why not give it a go Priscilla has asked I noticed in my area before any major school holidays no one responds to ads that might be if the six weeks um, August holiday come up because of people wants to want to spend time with their, with their family but if they've already got a job then obviously they have to sort that out and that's why it's important to always consistently have them coming in so you don't have to worry, oh, I've got August, because August is a very big month in the student accommodation sort of world where a lot of people are looking for cleaners because of the student cleans. And a lot of companies are willing to pay a lot more to get those staff members to cover student cleans because they are a little bit awkward because you all of a sudden, the, our first contract we had was with one landlord, he had 47 houses all had to be done in one month. So if the normal business runs as it runs and then all of a sudden you've got all of this work, that it makes it very hard. And that's why I literally, we paid a lot more for our staff during August to get that student cleans like out of the way because you probably need about 10 to 20 staff a day to have to cope with the demand. So yes, there is a certain times that people won't respond because they've probably just said, well, I want to do holiday cleaning, August. And if they are known to the industry, they'll know I'm going to wait for August and I'm not going to apply to any other 
sort of cleaning advert that comes up. So it, let's just say it's just having it consistent happening in the background so you're consistently getting people in and you can sift through them as they come. Have you got a template letter or anything as a rough guide to what to put in your ad for staff? I will have in the academy. It's a bit more tricky and it's sort of adding the five ones I used and tested and which one worked the best for me. I will give you the sort of the starting point of one of them and the one advert that did really really well for me or the best for me is basically what will you do with 450 extra this month because for that job they would have earned 450 pounds. So it was asking them so what what, what will you do with 450 pounds extra? And it was actually two hours in evening cleaning. And that attracted a lot of people because they didn't see the, oh, you need to clean for two hours boring advert. They saw, oh, well, hang on a minute. It's all about the end picture you're showing them. What are they really getting at the end of the day? Not the cleaning every day. What they're getting is, is that money. The freedom then to go and buy a brand new car. Like they can afford top of the range car for 450 pounds if they wanted to. But it's the end goal and let them focus on that that will make them turn. And that's the one that I found the heading that worked the best for us. And I did sort of underneath say a new car or that 200 pound pair of um, Gucci shoes that you've wanted. So obviously it depends on person to person what they want that money for. Or are you saving for a mortgage? Because obviously that's important to some people. And shoes are important to some people. And a new car is important for some people. So, but that's the best heading for the ads that, that work best for us. Did you pay extra for weekends? Yes, we did. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, weekends, we did work bank holidays. Pay time and a half. Saturday mornings up to 12. No, we didn't. But after 12, we did. And Sundays and bank holidays. And I did expect some of my staff to work for holidays, like bank holidays. Um, but I did make sure that they were well rewarded. I gave them like something for their efforts and for the fact that they are turning up. There was a lot that said, well, we don't want to work. Then fine, that's, that's fine. But when the other employees got their pay packets and saw the extra money added, they were, and then the other people that said no were jealous and they were like, well, hang on a minute. But I asked and you said no. So I always pay more. Um, you don't have to do time and a half. You can just do a little bit more. You can do two pounds an hour extra, whatever makes them work because we needed weekend staff, especially for end of tenancy. We needed Saturday, Sunday people to work. But if they did work Saturday, Sunday, I wouldn't expect them to work Monday to Friday. Not to bombard them with too much work and then they end up quitting because it's too much work. And please remember, Everybody in the whole world always says that cleaning is such hard work <laughs> and we're going to go down as a nation because a lot of people can't cope with cleaning all day. And, and that's quite a big problem for us, really. It is tiring work. Well, of course it is. Well, actually saying that, it, well, it is tiring, but I think it's focusing on the end goal that I reminded my staff all the time. It's not, oh, I've got to clean. Oh, it's going to take me eight hours. Is when this customer is going to walk in afterwards, guys, they're going to be over the moon. They're going to be so impressed and you're going to blow their socks. Like this is what we're providing. We don't provide cleaning. We provide the wow factor. That customer's face when they walk in and go, wow, that's what you need your staff to focus on to drive them to get to that end result that they know that their work is really important and it is. If your cleaners clean really well, you really need to look after them because of what they actually give for your company, what they actually provide for you. It's not the cleaning, it's wowing your customers and keeping your customers happy. So it's focusing on that end goal at all times. Kerry says, I cover a lot of Airbnb cleaning. I do laundry contract as well. So I like to keep them happy. Yes, um, do as well, everything in your power. And you know what? You can sit down with your cleaners if you currently got cleaners and ask them, look, I want to make this better. I want to in, you know, improve the morale, of the team building. I want to improve my business full stop because I want to keep you happy. What can I do and what can we do as a team to improve this, to make this better, to make cleaning more fun? And you get ideas from them and make them feel like they've got an impact in your business. They will feel so valuable that you're actually taking their 
what sort of their thoughts on board and if you act on any of those thoughts honestly you will make them you'll make them loyal <laughs> rather than just a cleaner they they will be loyal to you because they will feel appreciated and valued and and that's very important as well do really appreciate your time thank you very much for joining me live if you have any more comments please remember to comment and if you struggle with anything please remember to let me know you're not on your own but I think the most important thing is that you need to believe that you can do it you need to think of the picture in five years time what will your business look like I've put a post up today in the cleaning coach uh, in the, the cleaning business community and saying like so what will your business look in five years time from now I want you oh by the way I think that it got too liked and nobody commented I want you to focus on the main the main goal and I want you to see the house that you want that's going to cost three million pounds. I want you to see the car you're going to drive, which will probably be a Bentley, which will be about, I think, about 250 pounds, 1,000 pounds. I want you to imagine it. I want you to give yourself permission to daydream. And then I want you to walk into your house, and it will be your house, and sit in your car. And I want you to imagine yourself in that position, in that car, driving it. And going through the house, dream about it now. Focus on that. Go through the house and decorate each room. How you'll be decorating your house when you get there. You just need to hone in what you want your life to look like in five years time. And then I want you in that house, in that car, I want you to be grateful for what you've got there and then. Be grateful for that house. Be grateful for the money your business is going to be earning you. And be grateful for your Bentley. Be grateful for it and really thank the universe for it. And that is what will keep you going and what actually will make you realize that is what you need to focus on more than anything else. Because giving up is never an option, but focusing on your dreams, that's how dreams come true. Focusing and always having it in your mind, your house, your car, think about it and daydream about it every morning and every night before you go to bed and be grateful for that and it will come it will come just focus on it right guys so i will see you in the group and in the academy very soon once again thank you very much for your time i really do appreciate it lots of love i'll see you guys in the group bye